Welcome to the second episode of my travel in Azerbaijan's capital city of Baku. Baku has a rich heritage of history, culture and nature. And today we are going to start the day by visiting the old wall city called the Icheri Sheher. This is a city within a city. This old town is an oval shaped pocket of curving roads, grand palaces, mosques, the sunken ruins of old hammams and caravanserais. We took a two and a half to three hour guided walking tour of this old city to understand better the history of this place. Our first stop was to see one of the many historic baths called hammams. Our next stop was made in tar. It was erected sometime between the 7th and the 12th centuries. No one knows the exact details. We were told by our guide that back in the day it could have been a Zoroastrian fire temple. The relics of Zoroastrianism which once thrived in this oil-rich Baku city were replaced first with chapels then with mosques and madrasas. We being Zoroastrians were very interested in entering this tower, seeing it from within and going to the top. It is an almost 8 floor climb which we readily did. Now let me show you the breathtaking views of the Caspian Sea from the top. Next in line, we visited a souvenir shop but didn't buy anything from there cause shopping was not on our mind right now. But if you wish, you can surely buy a souvenir from this shop. Next stop was Jama Masjid. We did not go inside, so I can't say much about this place. We walked further down the cobble streets to visit the old time caravan sarais, which have now been converted to fine dine restaurants. In olden times, traders used to build and stay in these caravan sarais while on their trading tours through the Silk Route. We were here on a Monday and unfortunately the miniature book museum was closed, so we missed visiting it. After an uphill walk, we reached the palace of Shivansha. This palace has seen a lot of wars and bloodshed. You can see the gunshot holes on the walls with the blood stains even today. This carpeted inner hall used to be the sitting area of the Shah. Nothing much is left in this palace now. However, the complex contains the main building of the palace, the Van Hane, the burial vaults, the Shah's mosque with a minaret. With this, we completed the tour of this old city. It was lunch time and our guide was kind enough to take us to a very nice local restaurant on Nizami Street, which was just about a two minute walk from the main gate of the old city. This restaurant was called Dolma. The ambience was very traditional and truly appealing. Check it out for yourself. It had a lot of seating available and the food was truly yummy. We had some kebabs. I genuinely cannot recollect the names of the dishes, but they tasted so much like traditional Parsi dishes. The chicken or lamb with rice dish with pomegranates in it was so much like the traditional Zoroastrian berry pulav. And the other dish that we ordered was basically our very own Parsi lamb meat cooked to perfection with fried potatoes. The third dish that we ordered was basically creamy white chicken sandwiched within thin sheets of some kind of an Indian bread. Believe me when I say Azeri food is extremely similar to the Zoroastrian cuisine. This could be because Zoroastrianism was an ancient religion followed in Azerbaijan. After lunch, we drove for about an hour to reach the Gobustan National Park. This is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here we visited their museum and see what we found. Pause here and read if you are truly interested in knowing about the roots of Zoroastrianism. There were a lot of things from the prehistoric period here that have been excavated from the nearby caves by archaeologists. Now we move on to explore the most scenic surroundings of this national park region. Look at those astounding rock formations and let's explore the rock carvings from the prehistoric era. 
the next clip is a little shaky and that's not because my hand was shaking but it was because the wind was blowing at such a speed that it was difficult to hold the camera still. Some of the rock carvings were very visible but some were difficult to spot. But the view of the Caspian Sea from top of the rocks was simply mind-blowing. People with limited mobility will not be able to visit this place as some amount of hiking on these rocks is definitely needed. After spending some quality time here, we drove off for about 25 minutes to reach the mud volcanoes. There are many in this region, but the one that we were taken to were very small. So while booking your tour, ensure with your tour operator if he is going to take you to the big ones or the small ones. They are all similar, but we missed experiencing the larger ones. Can you see that bubble popping up? That's the mud volcano. That's all that we could see because this one was very small. But the winds here were so strong, we could not even stand out for more than a minute. After touring throughout the day, we drove back for about an hour and reached our hotel. And we called it a day. So did you enjoy watching this vlog? Do comment below and let me know. Like and share this video with family and friends. Do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more such interesting content. In my episode 3 of Baku Vlogs, I will be taking you to more enticing places. So stay tuned guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.